it's me, PI7, and we're going to break out a new game called Chojin Sentai Jetman, because it is the month of September, and always in September we always celebrate the month of Super Sentai, but I'm going to do this rather early because I'm not going to be here during this month. Anyway... The theme song is here, minus the epicness of Hironobu Kageyama. But it doesn't take away from the game itself. <laughs> My apologies if the audio sounds a little slower than normally. Something is wrong with my other um, Nintendo emulator. So I figured, eh, I might as well try something else. Okay, so this is based off the S Sentai classic of the same name. We have two ver two different um, options. We got the start, and we got Belmo. Belmo is basically you fight all the giant robot, the giant monsters in one go. Whereas start, well, we're just gonna play through the game. Of course, you got easy, normal, and password. Once again, I try my hand at this, and hopefully this works, so... It doesn't matter what, how you play it, you'll still end up with the same ending, so therefore... We got five areas to choose from. We got the port, the oil refinery, the city, the bridge, and something to be an underwater reservoir. Well, let's start with the ports. And of course, we got the five jetmen. The leader, Red Hawk. Blue Swallow. Yellow Owl. Black Condor. And White Swan. Now, this anime, uh, anime, this Sentai actually has, um, a very reminiscent motif, thanks to a popular anime, otherwise known, uh, a very sought-after anime that most of us have seen at one point, Kayaku Ninja Tai Gatchaman, as there being five members in that group. So we're going to start with Yellow Owl. Now the thing about this game is for some reason in various Sentai that have that I've seen, the strongest member of the group would happen to be, of course, the Yellow Ranger. It's always been like that since Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger. Motif has never changed though. Until for some strange reason when Zoo Ranger ended and it was dubbed over here as Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, it's always been like the 
the yellow ranger and the pink ranger were always women. But that is not so because the earlier forms show that A, the yellow ranger was always a male. The blue ranger and a pink ranger or a white ranger belong to either a woman or a very feminine man. So we're going to face our first boss here, which happens to be a mirror, a mirror monster. And here we go. I'm not skipping this part. Most people would skip this part, but since I've seen so many Sentai over the years, Sentai, not Power Rangers, I prefer to see the robot. The robot scene should not be cut. Or if you cut out the robot scene, you are missing out, man. I fear you not, bitch. Yeah, but I figured I could do this game before I actually leave for my excursion from LPs. This is really nothing. I mean, if you really think about it, this boss is really nothing. Especially when you do this. Fireball! When you do the Firebird, oh, that's all right. Next, we're going to go to the oil refinery. And this time, Blue Swallow is going to go in. Like, no. Yeah, Blue Swallow. Blue Swallow is going to go in. I remember on my practice run, it was yellow, black, blue, white, and white and what was supposed to be red. Sentai heroes carry around two weapons. Which is a blaster of some sort. And their main weapon, which will probably be a weapon. That icon helps you perform a special move. You have to press start in order to enable it. But the thing is, you can only use it once. Unlike when you're in your giant robot, you can only use your moves at least more than once, as long as you fill up the meter. And the meter, of course, fills up to four levels. And there are six levels, not just five, but six. So now we're going to face the camera monster.
again, I got I got a punch but I got a auto punch button which I can use at any time. And I forgot to use my back. Of course when you're at level four, you release a powerful shoulder charge. Level two, you send off a shockwave punch. Level two is a headshot, and level one, of course, is a punch. <sighs> Depending on how you attack the monsters, or how you choose to finish them off, that that pretty much depends the finisher. Well, actually, it doesn't depend on the finisher, but the way you fight determines the finisher. Not depends, it determines the finisher. And the, fi and the finishers are usually random. But moving on, we're going to... We're going to go in as the Black Condor, in which I will name Joe. That's right, Joe. And if you don't catch that reference, then something is wrong with you if you don't catch that reference that I made. I remember I saw this, this Sentai once, and I was about 10 episodes away Ten episodes away from actually finishing it. And I remember my girlfriend told me about, you know, the fact that I saw, you know, Sentai, you know. I watched it on Crunchyroll when it, when it was on Crunchyroll. And then when they took it off, I had no other way of watching it, so... Damn it. On my practice run, I took the high route. And the high route was... Not as much as taking the low route. But oh well. Anyway, I did see... I did see most of the series, but I never did finish watching it because... Of a virus. Terrible. I was that close to finishing a great Sentai in which was based off an old anime. Oh well. Moving on. This is the first of many I'm going to show for this week. And our second boss happens to be... Evil bus monster. I think it's a bus. For those who skip this scene, I feel sorry for you. That's like taking away the best part of a monster movie. Well, he is the bus. I think I've shown you most of the attacks. If not, I've only shown, like, the charge. The shockwave punch. But I haven't shown you the level one, which is just that. That was my level two right there. Bayasa just jumped on my level two. Uh, 
Really, sir? For that, I shall kill you. Firebird! And down for the count. Next. Next is the bridge. And for this level, I'm going to choose... White Swan, who I will dub as June. Yeah, I said it, June. Blue Swallow, who I dub as Jinpei. Yellow Owl, who I dub as Ryu. Black Condor, who I dub as Joe. <laughs> and of course, Red Hawk, who I'm going to dub as Ken. I might as well, shoot. Too bad the commander is not in this. I mean, out of all the same time I've actually watched, this was a pretty good Sentai. I mean, this was a pretty good Sentai. I can feel it right around, right around my cheek. Weird. Anyway, our next enemy happens to be a light armadillo. Do this. Now this is this on um, the many battles happens to be the most difficult to deal with. And trust me, I've played this game before without cheat. And he is hard as hell to beat him. He is hard as hell to beat. And, uh, and that's the real big trick right there. You have to basically corner him in order to beat him. Another Firebird. Four for four on the Firebird. Or shall I call it the Phoenix? Out of the way you slice this is it's still Hinotori. But anyway, moving on. Next is Area E, the under, underground reservoir. And Can is going in, yes. Now I know yes, his 
his name in, in the Sentai is called Ryu. But I'm dubbing him Ken. Because if you don't catch the reference, something is wrong with you. Pretty much all you have to do is just keep jumping and... Most of the enemies here will just basically charge you and become pla- well... They'll become pains in the ass if you let them charge at you. Now, if you're able to jump over that, instead of taking the water route, just like I'm able to do so, now you can't beat that. You can beat that mine from actually exploding itself. But if you're too far away from it, to stay from a distance, and you will eventually let it destroy itself. I'm going to call these floating mines because that's what he kind of resemble to me, floating mines. Again, when you cross, just be careful on your way. Now, you can't go after it with your flying kick. I prefer the flying kick anyway to take out the gun turrets. And as we get to the next boss, we find out that this next boss happens to be an elephant where which what I think has a clock on its on its forehead, I think. Let's do this thing. Now, of course, next to this, next to this thing, it's, well, the elephant is somewhat difficult, but again, the trick you have to do is basically corner him. He will keep firing shots at you at every level, as you can see. And he will try to push you back throughout each time he builds up on level one. And therefore, another boss has bitten in dust. bosses in this game would probably try to push you back, but if you can push them back into the corner, that's how you can mainly get most of the bosses. Except for one. And this here is the final stage. The last area. And who else but to take out the this evil, none other than the leader itself. Red Hawk. First, as I told you, most of these enemies you will see 
a rehash is from the last level, which was Area E. Now, about these other enemies, these gun turrets, these laser turrets, they will technically try to take you down. So basically, they take only two shots, and when you take them down, after those two shots, only the base remains. Now there's no way you can actually get up there, so... There's no real point in wondering how could you get up there. There is no way. Once again, just wait for the... Just wait for the, um... The mine to blow up. And what the hell just happened? Red Hog just got knocked out. How the hell that happened? Red Hog, how did it... How the hell that happened, man? Anyway, moving on. Yeah, I did not expect that to happen. Red Hog just got knocked the hell out. But you're gonna have to forgive me if um I take slight pauses here. I think there are some bugs in my room. I'm kind of feeling them. I don't know why. But anyway, moving on. Red Hawk just got knocked out, ladies and gentlemen. Don't know why. Okay, we're just gonna move on. Because really, what's the point in that? Now, if I really wanted to, I think I will. I'm going to take this route. And just take the high route from here. No, sir. And just consider going for it still. Duck the laser shots. Duck the fire shots. And continue going forward. Just keep going forward at this point. But this is the last leg. And as we get here, we're going to meet the... What seems to be the final boss of the game. I forgot who the hell that is. I think that might have been the second in command of, of the show. The second in command, if not the main main boss of the show. But anyway, we're doing this for Ken the Eagle. Or Ken the Red Hawk. Or Ryu the Red Hawk. I prefer to call him Ken the Eagle, but anyway. Let's take this son of a bitch down once and for all. Now, one of the many strategies I actually saw when facing the final boss was this method. Which was, just use your projectiles. You can just use your projectiles if you want to. Like the head beam. Your fist fire. Or 
or even your paralyzer. And just push him back and say, ah, you son of a bitch, you're going down. With that, the final boss is finished. And Great Icarus delivers a final blow. And that's it. Earth was saved. Thank you, Jetman, and thank you for playing. And that's it. That was Chojin Sentai Jetman. One of the many lost Sentai games I've ever seen. And trust me, it's not that easy. The final boss really isn't that easy. I just made it look easy, but it's not really that easy. But anyway, with that, that'll do it for Chojin Sentai Jetman. Following this game will be something you've probably seen before under a different title, but it is also a toku show nonetheless. What is that? You'll find out right after this. I don't think there's anything else, so... Yeah. There you go. A, B, and start at the title. Now that will give you um, a harder mode. But there ain't no way I'm gonna be doing that. So, see you, see you with the next game. <laughs>